fullness of his presence. There's joy. There's peace. There's strength. There's healing virtue that's flowing even now. Don't you just love him this morning? The old chorus that we sing from time to time, Oh, how I love Jesus. Don't you just love him today? In the midst of all of the not knowing, in the midst of all of the uncertainty, one thing is certain, that he is still in complete control today. Amen. I have a whole lot of things I could say this morning, but I want to make sure that I follow the leading of the Holy Spirit today. I feel like God wants to speak to our hearts in this very unique time that we find ourselves in. To every time and every season, there is a purpose. We know that. But on this Sunday morning, I do believe that this is not just a typical Sunday morning. As we, as well as many other congregations of people across the globe today, celebrates Pentecost Sunday, can I tell you today Pentecost is not a denomination Pentecost is a very unique time that has been set apart it is a time that does not belong to man but it is a time that belongs to God and for a few moments this morning as I stand before you and Please bear with me today. I am a bag full of emotions today. I'll just give you that disclaimer right off the top. Okay. But as I see our nation in peril, I see evil men have made contracts with demonic powers and spirits and principalities. As I stand before you feeling the weight of loss of a dear friend as well as feeling the weight of my friend, Brother Wade, today. I still stand here today on assignment. Burnt the midnight oil this week. And I want to do my best today. to give to you my heart but more importantly the heart of God today it's not going to be a traditional message today but I want you to hear the word of the Lord I'm going to do my best for the next few moments to deliver to you this very unique time in history. I don't have a message of doom and gloom today. I'm not here to bring it down to a place where it's woe is me type atmosphere. No. But I want you to hear today that we are in a time where there is an absolute transformation that's taking place in the heavenly realm that's affecting the spiritual realm as well as the earthly realm today. And our future is brighter than our past if we trust God this morning. 
you hear me. I want to talk to you for a few moments about the equipping for harvest. Pentecost this morning, let me give you just a brief history of where we are today. Pentecost, it is the 50th day after Passover. It originally celebrated yearly as a celebration of harvest called and formerly known most by the Jewish people called the Feast of Weeks or the Feast of Harvest. You can read of it in Deuteronomy 16, Acts chapter 20, as well as 1 Corinthians 16 and 8. Talks about this time. However, on the first Pentecost after Christ's resurrection, the Holy Spirit uniquely came down and set up on the believers of that day that was gathered in an upper room in Jerusalem. And therefore, since that time, Christians all over the globe have connected Pentecost with the coming or the arrival of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to attempt this morning to do just that. And I do pray this morning that we have ears to hear what the Spirit is desiring to say to us in this season. Through the study of Scripture this morning, as well as through the study of history, we do know a few things. We know that Passover, or Easter, which was just 50 days ago, it commemorates God's deliverance of Israel out of a land called Egypt. In your Bibles in Exodus chapter number 12, the first 20 verses of that chapter gives us the story of the blood of a lamb being applied to the lintel and the doorpost of the homes of the children of Israel that was living in a land of bondage. And the word of the Lord was this, that if the blood is applied to your home, the death angel will pass over you and you will not suffer the loss of your firstborn. But he said this in that story, never forget what I'm about to do on your behalf. And he said, I want you to make a memorial and I want you to honor it every time, every year at this time. And it is a deliverance from the state of oppression that you will currently find yourself in. Now, if you read in your Bible, you will find that leading up to that time in history, it says that the cry of the people went up before the Lord. And we know that their cry had not just reached the throne of God, but it had touched his heart in such a manner that he had to respond. And it was in a season of darkness and uncertainty and hardship and even death that God chose a man. In order for us to really look at the complete context of the story, you would have to go to Exodus chapter three and you would find that there was a man by the name of Moses that's on the backside of the desert tending the sheep of his father-in-law when all of a sudden he saw a bush that was burning that was not been consumed and he said, I'm going to turn and see what this is and the word of the Lord came to him through that burning bush and said, take your shoes off, Moses, you are on holy ground. Now, when you begin to read that story, the Lord says, I'm bidding you to go and to stand before Pharaoh and you're going to lead my people from a place of bondage into a place of promise. And this has been an overwhelming task. Moses said, but who am I? Who are they going to listen to? Why would they listen to me? What am I supposed to say? But in chapter 3 and verse 12 of that, that particular passage, you will find that the word of the Lord was certainly I will be with thee. And then he instructed him to simply go and to tell. And when you read verse 15 through 20, you will find in that chapter that the word of the Lord was this. He said, go tell them that the 
that, that the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, go tell them that the I am that I am is the one that sent you and that he is with you and that he's heard your cry and he's not going to leave you where you are, but he's going to take you to the place of that has been inhabited by the Canaanites and the Hittites and, and you're going to go into a land of promise uh, and you're going to leave this place of hardship and you're going to transition into a place of milk and honey. Now, we find, while I could preach much about Passover, you find that 50 days later, a little later in time, Pentecost begins to be a feast, or the Feast of Weeks, Feast of Harvest that is beginning to be celebrated, and Pentecost commemorates the giving of the law at Mount Sinai as well as the time of first fruits of the harvest. We know that Pentecost originally is the second of three festivals that happens annually. It is always seven weeks after Passover. And it's the time of successful harvest and celebration, first fruits are offering. It's a time when no work is to be done. Notice this, if you read Leviticus 23 and 31, it is a time where no work was to be done and every male went to the sanctuary and a sin and a peace offering was made at that time. It was also a time when the high priest would take off of that offering and they would wave it before the Lord. And there was a sweet smelling savor that was coming off of the altar. But something very unique about this time, Pentecost, this is what the Lord said concerning it. He said, go tell Israel Tell them that this is not just any time of gathering. But he said, this is to be saw and considered and approached as a time of holy convocation. He said, tell them that it is not their feast, but tell them it's my feast. If we would say it in modern day language that we can understand, he was saying this. On your calendar, every day can be your day. You can do whatever you choose to do with it, but at this time on the calendar, it's my time. He wanted them to know that it was just not another time of gathering, but it was in this time where he said there is something that changes and, and it's something that is divinely appointed and orchestrated to bring focus back to me. Notice it was at this time of Pentecost and Passover that Jesus, coming in the form of man, been laid in a manger, walked this earth for 33 and a half years roughly. It was at the time of Passover and Pentecost that he decided to disrupt the world. He disrupted in such a way that he broke the curse of sin defeated death, bruised the head of the serpent, walked into hell, took the keys from the devil himself, rose in victory from the grave, uh, walked with men for 40 days, providing infallible proofs that he was really alive uh, in such a manner, also speaking to them of things pertaining to the kingdom. All which paved the way for something to happen that had never happened before, on the very first Pentecost after his death, which was the arrival or the release of Holy Spirit. Notice when he arrived up on this planet, he did not arrive defeated, he did not arrive insecure, he did not arrive intimidated by anyone or anything. Oh no, he arrived in power and authority. You and I today have to understand that he had been commissioned by the Father to come and to sit down upon those that had been faithful to the commandments of his Son. And notice when he came, he came suddenly. In the midst of evil, 
in the midst of uncertainty, in the midst of confusion, in the midst of division, in the midst of blindness, in the midst of religious poison, in the midst of everything that the enemy had orchestrated and was celebrating saying, we are winning. All of a sudden, a sound of a rushing mighty wind left the portals of heaven. And your Bible says that it entered into the upper room where they were sitting and it feels the house and there appeared unto them cloven tongues as a fire and it set down upon them and your Bible says and they were filled with the Holy Ghost I won't take the time to read Acts chapter 2 completely but let me give you just a little bit of it And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as fire, and it set up on each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues uh, as the Spirit gave them utterance. Uh, And there was dwelling at Jerusalem Jews and devout men out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and they was confounded uh, because that every man heard them speak in his own language. Uh, But notice verse 12, and they were all amazed uh, and were in doubt saying one to another, what meaneth this? Uh, Others began to mock and say, these men are full of new wine. Uh, But Peter said, uh, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice, uh, and he said, ye men of Judea and all that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you and hearken to my words. Uh, These men are not drunk as you suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. Uh, But this is that uh, which was spoken by the prophet Joel. uh, And it come to pass in the last days, saith God, uh, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh uh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy uh, and your young men shall see visions uh, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens, uh, I will pour out in those days of my spirit uh, and they shall prophesy. Uh, I will show wonders in heaven above uh, and signs in the earth beneath, uh, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. Uh, The sun shall be turned into darkness uh, and the moon into blood before that great and notable day of the Lord comes. Uh, And it shall come to pass uh, that whosoever uh, shall call upon the name of the Lord uh, shall uh, be saved. Uh, Oh, somebody uh, ought to get ready uh, for what God's about to do. Uh, Listen, uh, I didn't come this morning uh, to talk to you about religion. Uh, I didn't come this morning to talk to you about putting your name uh, on a membership card. Uh, But I come to tell somebody today uh, God's had enough. Uh, I want to give you a decree. Uh, I want to give you a declaration. Uh, You can write it down uh, or you can say I've lost my mind. Uh, But I'm going to give you what God gave me last night in the wee hours. Can I tell you right now, hear the word of the Lord. This is not the hour of man, says God. Man has had their time and they have scattered my flock. They have not only scattered, but they have brought much harm and injury to those that I love. No more am I going to allow man to destroy those that I have ordained for this season of harvest. I am removing those uh, that thought they could defile my house uh, and hinder my children. Uh, I am bringing forth uh, a fresh visitation of my spirit says the Lord. Uh, Those that have been faithful to seek me uh, I am sending my spirit uh, to not only commune with you uh, but I have instructed the Holy Spirit uh, to fill your house with my presence uh, and to sit down upon you. Uh, In this season saith the Lord uh, that I am going to make the weak strong and the 
the spirit of intimidation is going to be broken off my people, says the Lord. My church is getting ready to become a raid in beauty. The ashes of yesterday's failure is going to be replaced by signs and wonders that are going to be springing forth from the infusion of power that I am bringing even now. Many people are going to remove their harps from the willows and their song is going to begin to be sung. The worship is going to return and I will honor it with my presence. No longer will I permit entertainment to be the focus of my house, but my house is going to be known by the cry that comes up out of it uh, and the deliverance that can be found in it. As I called Moses from a place of obscurity, uh, I am visiting with and calling forth those that you have not seen as mighty uh, or powerful. uh, And they are going to lead my church into the promises uh, that I have for this day. Uh, There are those under the sound of my voice today uh, that God said no longer uh, will I permit you to sit idle, uh, but that gift that's inside of you, uh, he's saying I'm stirring it even now uh, as this man of God speaks. And you have to choose. You have to surrender, says the Lord. And as the cloud rose up out of the sea, I am now, even now, releasing my spirit. And there is a cloud that is going to rise up out of my house that is going to begin to move across the heavens. And rain is going to begin to fall on barren soil. And it is going to spring forth in the midst of deserts, saith the Lord. Oh, Oh, uh, hear me this morning. Uh, Political systems uh, are getting ready to crumble. Uh, Evil men will be exposed in the next few days uh, and removed. Uh, Drums of war are going to begin to be beat louder and harder. Uh, But the Lord says, uh, fear not, uh, I am with you. Uh, Those uh, that have uh, turned, uh, hear me today, uh, those that have turned the wheels of division uh, in this nation uh, is going to be dealt with says the Lord just because they have reverend in front of their name does not make them exempt from what I am about to do rearranging and realigning things in heavenly places says the Lord that will give passage to my church as the fire comes it's going to burn out the impure and remove the snitch of sin from my house and I will take pleasure in my house once again says the Lord and I will make my abode there I am equipping for harvest says the Lord No man is going to get my glory for I'm about to do in the earth something uh, that is going to be like none other. Uh, And men uh, will fall before me uh, and they will worship my name. Uh, The day of equipping is now uh, and the release of my spirit is now, says the Lord. Uh, But the call is going this morning uh, to the church. Uh, This is not a time uh, to look backwards, uh, but the Lord says uh, you have to return to holiness. Uh, You have to stir up the gift. You have to get your focus back on my commission. Prayer has to be your foundation. Entertainment must be removed. And the platform must once again be filled with the Holy Ghost and power. Oh. I want to speak to you in this room right now. I don't know what the devil said to you. I don't know what lies he's used against you. uh, But by the power and the authority of the Holy Spirit of God in this room right now, uh, I release you uh, to be the man of God, uh, the woman of God uh, that 
God has ordained you to be. Don't you run from what he has for you, but run to what he has for you in this season and you will experience the supernatural power of God. I want you to stand all over this house. I don't want you to focus on anybody around you. But God is speaking to you this morning. Maybe you have never had a Holy Ghost experience with God. Maybe you've never experienced uh, the sitting down like they did in the upper room. Maybe you've never experienced that flame of fire. But hear me today. The church, the church has been re-refined. It's been purified so that he can begin to receive glory in a manner that he has not received in recent years. But he is choosing to use you just like he's chose to use those that was before you. Today, there's equipping for harvest. True worship is returning and he is going to honor it with his presence. How do I really worship How do I really worship? Right now you worship him by surrendering your all. There are those in this room under the sound of my voice. There is giftings and callings. You have been fearful of them. You've been hesitant to operate in them and yield to them. The Lord is releasing you today to flow freely in them. But you have to be the one that simply says, yes, Lord. Today, our nation is burning. Evil is stoking the flames. And they're wanting to divide and separate. Let me remind you, he did not come to condemn this world, but he came so that this world through him might be saved. The Holy Spirit right now, please hear me. While God the Father and God the Son is in the throne room of heaven, after Jesus showed himself for 40 days with infallible proofs, And then he ascended into heaven. Two men dressed in white appeared and said, why do you stand here gazing? In like manner, he will come again. But right before he ascended, he had instructed and commanded, go to Jerusalem and tarry there because not many days from now, you will be endued with power from on high. Acts chapter 1. We know that the apostles was there. Jesus' his mother was there. His brothers was there. Those that had been faithful was there. He said, John did baptize with water, but you will be baptized with power. They turned the world upside down because they simply put their trust in him. Hear me this morning. What are you putting your trust in? The early church said, we're going to wait on the promise. They had to wait on the promise. Hear me. Ten days go by. All of a sudden, suddenly, sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind comes and enters into the room where they were sitting 
filled the house and then it sat down up on them. At that moment, the wait was over. Peter stood in power and authority where just 50 days prior, he, he said, I don't even know who he is, but after true repentance, he stood with power and authority and preached a message. And 3,000 people turned their heart to God. Hear me. They waited on the promise. The world began to be turned upside down by this message that Jesus loves, saves, heals, delivers. And it wasn't just a story, but there was evidence of the power. Lame men began to walk. Dumb men began to talk. Blinded eyes began to see. Those that was bound by demonic strongholds began to feel freedom and liberation. Listen, I'm not interested in getting somebody through something. I'm interested in getting somebody delivered from something. God chose to use 120 people. God's choosing to use you. He's choosing to use me. But the question is, are you more in love with this world or than you are him this morning? As they come to the piano, I'm going to make it short this morning. If you're under the sound of my voice today, I'm not questioning your salvation. I'm not, I'm not questioning that at all. And you may say, well, I had a Pentecostal experience in 1970. That's wonderful. I'm glad you did. But what about 2020? And I'm not talking about January or February or March of 2020. What about today in 2020? I'm going to tell you something this morning. There's a generation that's been plagued by darkness, and disease, and demonic powers, and strongholds. And I have to say to you this morning, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might, but put on the whole armor of God. You can pick up a shield, you can pick up a sword, but listen, you have got to have a Pentecostal experience to operate in the power that we need in this season to fight off that which is facing us as a nation and as an individual. And I know we all seen a lot of stuff. But take the stuff that you saw and throw it in the trash and don't judge your experience by what others may have done or didn't do. But begin to turn your heart towards God and say, God, not only do I desire you, but I desire the gifts that you have for me. Lord, more so than the gift, I desire the giver of the gift, but Lord, I know this that while you're sitting in the portals of heaven, read your Bibles in the book of Chronicles, you will find that it says the Holy Spirit is moving upon the earth today looking for someone that he can inhabit. But he can only inhabit, hear me, 500 of us by the seashore and even seen Jesus go. But only 120 were filled. He can only inhabit those that desire to live in fellowship with him and that turn their heart. Listen, there's some things you're going to have to turn off in your life in order to turn on the things that God has for you. And I'm going to tell you something, it's the best trade you'll ever make. God is getting ready to do something in this earth. Young people in this room, under the sound of my voice, you hear me. 
You can run after that trophy in whatever sport it is, and I'll run with you, and I'll hold up your hands, and I'll celebrate it with you. But I need you to run harder for the things of God at the altar than any of those things. Because God's going to use you in a very unique way. God wants to equip you today for the harvest. What does that mean, Pastor? It means this. You don't have to be a super spiritual person because there isn't any of them anyway. You just have to be an authentic you with the heart turned towards Him and says, God, give me more of you. Let there be less of me. There are those under the sound of my voice that you know this morning. Down deep you know that there's some things that God has called you to that you have been very hesitant. But God is saying, now's the time. I need you. I need you. I'm choosing to have need of you. I'm desiring to equip you for harvest. Today, my heart is heavy. My heart is heavy for our nation, the citizens of our homeland, as well as the nations of the world. But my heart is heavy for the church. I spoke to a pastor this week and he said, I had such anticipation of coming back to the church. I thought for sure that there would just be this level of excitement and people would want to just be there. And he said, I just thought that it was going to be great. And he said, I've done it for three weeks now. And he said, and he was just so depleted. He said, it just, he said, I'll be honest with you. He said, Pastor, he said, the first week was just awful. He said, the second week wasn't much better. He said, last week was, he said, I just don't even know how to describe. He said, it's just no life. He said, he said, I don't even know where to go from here. Large church. On the outside, as you drive by, you think they have it all together. But it's empty, it's cold. And I don't say that in a judgmental fashion, no, no, no. I'm saying that there, what there needs to be is just a turning upward and a setting down and an infilling of Holy Spirit. We may have moved from the other side of the track, so to speak, in the last 50 years as the church in America. But there's some things on the other side of those tracks that those that paved the way for us had that we need desperately right now. They had power. They had authority. They saw the miracle working power of God in their families and in their community. How did they see it? Because they just simply said, Lord, here am I. If you can use anything, use me. This morning, right now, if you're one of them, I would simply say, Lord, here am I. If you can use anything, use me. I'm not concerned about your gifting, your talent. I'm not concerned about your social status. I don't, I don't care how many years you say you've been saying. Listen, if you're under the sound of my voice and you'd say this this morning, Pastor, I am one of them that if he can use anything, let him use me. I want you to step from your seat and we'll make room across the front of this building. I want you to stand and I want you to begin to just talk to him. You don't need me to pray for you. You don't need anybody to lay hands on you. But I'm believing right now, as they get ready to worship, we need to, we'll move those chairs out of the way on each side. But right now, God is desiring to equip you. He's wanting to do something in you that I cannot do. I don't have the ability. I don't have the talent. I don't have the know-how. But right now, I do know this, that when men and women begin to get their eyes on Jesus and begin to talk to him, you don't have to use thousand these and all those things. No, you just got to talk to him. 
And I want you to just not be silent this morning, but I want you to just use your voice. Because you got to understand that they waited 10 days for Pentecost to come, but we are here and it is Pentecost today. So today at Pentecost, there is an equipping that you can have by the Holy Spirit because when he sees you, when you're positioned in the manner that you are and you begin to say, God, I give myself to you, then there is, a, there is an outpouring of Holy Spirit that can come. Maybe you need refilled. Maybe you just need to be in strengthened and encouraged. Uh, maybe you never experienced the Holy Spirit before, but say, God, I receive the gifts that you have for me today and today can be your day. As they just minister in song this morning, I want you to just lift your hands and lift your voice and love on God for a few moments today. Hallelujah. Oh, we call out to you today, Lord, right now. Lord, as we stand corporately in the front of this building right now, we ask Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come have your will, have your way. Lord, I pray that the anointing power of Holy Spirit would just rest upon them. Lord, let the unfeeling power of the Holy Spirit begin to fall upon this room. Maybe there's one today that is weak. Maybe there's one today that is discouraged. Maybe there's one today. Oh, Father, as we call out, let the winds of Pentecost begin to blow in this house.